What's up, guys? Today is a day that the Lord has made. So let's rejoice and be glad in it. You know, sometimes I just need to make a video for me as well. <laughs> it's like the Bible talks about us uh, focusing on good things because where our focus goes, you know, it grows. So if we're focusing on things that are praiseworthy, things that are of good report, noble and true things, right? That our focus goes on those things and then we can kind of deal with the outlying, like things that might not be so positive in our life with like a better mindset, right? Because when we're focused on things that are good in our life, um, we have gratitude. And when we're grateful, it's hard to be miserable, right? So there's a huge spiritual principle there, no matter where you're at, um, even if everything in your life is hard, you know, you're obviously breathing, uh, you obviously can hear me, uh, there's things to be grateful for, right? We have an opportunity to be grateful every day or to be negative every day. So, um, I was just kind of flipping through my Bible and I saw this psalm and I've done other videos on psalms and they're just so spot on, you know, and it's just crazy because of how old these are, you know, yet they become our own experience with God. This is exactly, you know, <laughs> my thoughts on a page written thousands of years ago. So... I know that this is true and I know that this is helpful, you know, and uh, we have to have some standard of truth, especially going through um, spiritual warfare and dealing with lying spirits that are going to tell us <laughs> lies, right? That if we don't have a, a plumb line or a true north, it's like we can get way off really quick. So that's why I, my best advice to anyone is to read the word of God, believe the word of God, study it, you know, investigate it. If you don't believe in it, it's right here. It's all right here. But the word of God proves itself. It's, it's amazing, you guys. And it's made the biggest difference in my life. So I'm just going to share uh, Psalm 27, just reminding me of, you know, who God is, who I am, and what God's delivered me from. Because, you know, I'm just like you guys too. I have I have the choice when I wake up. Okay, am I gonna am I gonna focus on things that aren't great in my life yet, or am I gonna be thankful for what is going good and the things that God's done for me? And you know, today I'm choosing I'm choosing to set my mind on things above and not below. You know, and I'm gonna be grateful for this day because. Like you, uh, I'm sure you guys have had a lot of, you know, days that maybe you didn't think you were going to make it through or maybe that you shouldn't have made it through, but, you know, something happened and God was looking out for you. So I'm going to read Psalm 27. It's a Psalm of David. He says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? So he's contrasting, like, you know, when you're tempted to fear other things, if you just fear God above those things, you're going to follow him and um, live in a way that is pleasing to him. If you fear man, you're going to cater to man. You're going to do things that are opposed to God. Um, he says, the Lord is, is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So a stronghold is a military uh, built-up fortress, right? You know, a, a strong position, right? So he's reminding himself who God is. And this is obvious that David's going to be uh, going through things, right? And this might sound familiar to you. He says, so he gets his eyes on God. He kind of uh, refocuses, like, who shall I fear if I have God on my side, right? Like it says in the New Testament, it says, if God is for me, who can be against me, right? If we have the most high God on our side, what are we worried about? The problem is truly believing that God's on your side. 
So he says this, verse 2, When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. So he goes on to say, Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war breaks out against me, even then I will be confident. So he's saying things are coming at him. Right, and he says when too. He says when the wicked advance against me. So it's not if, he says when, so he knows it's coming. But notice he says this, he says, my heart will not fear and I will be confident. So again, this kind of goes back to the first few verses where he reminds himself who God is, who shall I fear uh, if God is the stronghold of my life. So this is where you need to get to because when the enemy comes at you, you need to have a place to go and that place in God can never be taken from you. No matter what you're going through, right? That stronghold, that high tower is out of the grasp of the enemy's position, right? They can't get to that place. And so as long as you rely on God, like you're, you're safe with him in that position, you know? And he says this, so this is like, I feel like David says um, this because this is his true heart. God called David a man after his own heart. So he says this in verse four, one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. So this is the one thing he's asking from God that he would, he would have that place with him, that he may dwell in God's house, right? It's beautiful, because that's the one thing he wants. That I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. That's it. That's what he's asking of God. So... Even though these things are going going on in his life and they're going to be coming, he's focusing on things that are positive, the things that um, are noble, right? And uh, <clears throat> of good cheer and good rapport. Like, this is his focus. And this is what he's asking of God. He says in verse 5, For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of, of his sacred tent. And set me high upon a rock. I mean, that's his, his strong tower, right? Set his feet upon a high rock. That's, you know, a rock is, is um, speaks of strength and a high position is safety. Strength and safety. That's his position in God. So this is kind of the theme here that I'm getting from it. He says... He says then, so referring to after he's being set on a high upon a rock, then my head will be exalted above my enemies who surround me. You know, so to be above your enemies is to be, you know, in a better position than, than them. And a position of safety, right? His, their head is, his head is above his enemies who surround him. Then my head will be exalted above my enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. So he's he's worshiping from a place of victory, right? God has lifted him up above his enemies, and now David is praising him for it. Right? So this is just like our lives. It's like we're going through things, right? And these attacks and things are, are uh, it's tempting for us to take our eyes off God and, and be worried about what's going on in our life, no matter what it is. If we're having um, issues in our life or we're going through actual attacks, you know, we don't have to focus on those things. We can focus on our position in Christ, our position with God and worship there because he's given us victory. The Bible says, praise be to God who always gives us the victory in Christ Jesus. 
Amen. So he says, I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. The Bible says that God is our ever-present help in time of trouble. Ever-present help in time of trouble. Or another verse says, uh, or another version of that, in time of need. So God is always attentive to our prayers. Verse 8. My heart says to you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. So the Bible says man looks at outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. If David's heart is always saying, seek his face, that's like his desire of his heart is to seek God. Remember, he says, the one thing that I ask that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all my days. That's his heart. A heart after God. And David had it rough, you guys. David didn't have no cookie cut, like, silver spoon. Like, yeah, he was king, but he also went through times that were, you know, pretty much as gnarly as you can get. In the wilderness, in battle, you know, all that. So, he, sorry, my buddy just came in. Hopefully don't interrupt. Hopefully don't interrupt. Okay. Uh, he says, verse 9, Do not hide your face from me, and do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. So David knew his dependency upon God. And there were times where David made huge mistakes in his life. You know, if you read Psalm 51, it's like his lamenting over... Um, his like adult adultery with Bathsheba and then which eventually uh, he basically got her husband killed and you know that's a whole nother story but David made huge mistakes in his life but God honored him almost above anyone because David was very honest with God in his mistakes and everything he always came to God with his whole heart and one thing that I believe God spoke to me before was when I was at a really low low place coming back to him it was like I was going through all these emotions and just like regrets and stuff. And I felt like, oh, sorry, I felt like God told me that um, if I bring my whole heart to him, that he'll accept it as worship. You know, sometimes we think that worship can only be like singing praises and stuff. But it's like, no, when you bring your whole heart to God, even if it's sadness or anger, you know, sorrow, whatever it is, like if you bring his the whole heart to God that's worship <clears throat> man he says uh, do not hide your face from me and do not turn your servant away in anger you have been my helper do not reject me or forsake me God my savior though my father and mother forsake me the Lord will receive me so he's contrasting with like, you know, the love of people that's fickle and like wishy-washy, right? He's like, you know, your mother and father are supposed to be ones who love and take care, care of you, right? And he's like, even if they forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Because he knew God, right? He knew the depths of his own, of his own um, sin and mistakes, yet God always received him when he brought his whole heart to him. Uh, verse 11 he says teach me your way lord lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors so he's saying he needed god's guidance right he needed um god to guide him because of things that were going on um, that were kind of outside of his control you know being attacked and being being surrounded by enemies at different times in his life and then he, he, he throws up this to him in verse 12. He says, do not turn me over to the desires of my foes. Like, don't 
don't throw me to what they want to do to me right and i've been there too it's like i knew that the desires of these people that were you know wanting wanting to get me were not good and i and i remember having these prayers like it's like don't don't allow them to do what they say they're gonna do they tell me they're gonna get me they're gonna hurt me they're gonna kill me don't let them do it god like show up you know so if you've been there you've been there <clears throat> god answered me hallelujah so he says do not turn me over to the desires of my foes for false witnesses rise up against me spouting malicious accusations so what i like about this is like he's he's pleading to god for the malicious accusations and uh, false, false witnesses rising up against him and how how often do we want to engage with the slander or um the lies in the the things spoken against us we want to engage that we want that to stop like david was going to god about this and he was going to god for a solution was like don't give don't let them do what they want to do to me like they're um, lying about me, they're cursing me, they're doing all these things. And he said, uh, don't turn me over to them. Like he was pleading to God for help in the situation. That's what I see in this. And he, I, I just think this is so cool how like Psalms are laid out. And every time I read, like I see different stuff, right? So he's pleading to God, don't turn me over to their desires. Um, the ones who are speaking maliciously and uh, bearing false witness against him. And then it goes back to this, right? So it's like, a re he's like reminding himself. He says, I remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. <laughs> wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. So he is reminding himself to put his trust fully on the Lord and his timing. And um, his true heart desire, right? It kind of goes back and forth between that. You know, the one thing that he asks is to seek... The, uh, is to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. And so it goes through that. And then at the end, you know, he's reminding himself that that's what's most importantly. And also he says, uh, he says twice, he says, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. So twice he says that that's important. So there's a biblical principle that says vengeance belongs to the Lord. Remember, he's having these uh, opposing forces come at him and he realized like it's in God's hand and he's appealing to God and reminding himself at the same time that you know the battle belongs to the Lord you know he looks to the hills to see where his help comes from his, his help comes from the Lord that's another that's another psalm so this is powerful you guys like there's so much things in the psalm that that uh can speak to us and give us perspective but we have to slow down and we have to you know just like what i'm doing in this video i'm doing these videos a for myself b for anyone that wants to hear and then uh hopefully you know you can see how much can be spoken through these things that's that's only 14 verses right but you know now i'm going to think about this throughout my day and i'm going to ask god to reveal more through through his written word and that's what he does you know and his, his word is alive and active and it speaks to our situation. You know, it's a discerner of, between our heart and our spirit. And it shows us, it shows us what truth is. And it shows us where we're off. So that's all I got. I'll see you guys on the next one.